Tonight in a special program on the BBC News Channel, Tim Peake lifts the lid on his time in space. Here's what happened when I went to meet him. I've had a chance to look back at some of the photographs and uh, reflect on the mission, and it, it was just a truly wonderful experience. Uh, several highlights, you know, just arrival on the space station and suddenly floating through to this area that feels really familiar. The spacewalk is definitely probably the, the greatest highlight. All right, gentlemen, looking great. Glad to see you both out there together on the tip of the world. Tim, welcome back. Thank you. How does it feel to be back? Was it everything you hoped for? Uh, it was everything and more, definitely. The space station is a remarkable place to live and work, and it, it's you know it's very exciting. You're always being challenged. Um, you're never bored, and and so it's a great place to be. Was it strange seeing your family and friends for the first time? Because you've been away. What's it like kind of reintegrating with your family? You know, it's been remarkably easy. And I think part of that is because I've had such great contact with my family once whilst I was on board the space station. Once a week, I'd have a uh, video conference with them, um, and I was able to, to phone my wife whenever I wanted to. So you feel a very close connection anyway to the family. Of course, uh, especially with two young children, you're know, reintegrating back in. It takes a, a little bit of a while, but it was really quite simple. Does Daddy rule the nest back home with the kids? <laughs> I, don't think, I don't think Daddy's ever ruled the nest back home, but that's uh, definitely <laughs> Mummy's domain. But uh, no, it's definitely great, great to be back. So, Tim, I've um, got you into your sleeping den. Um, I I'm quite intrigued. What, what do we have in here? Yeah, so this is an astronaut's crew quarter. It's actually a little bit larger than the one on board. Not, not, not much, though. This uh, is larger. Oh, it's slightly larger. So this larger. is a roomy, like a king-size yeah, deluxe this is, bedroom, this is, isn't it? king-size <laughs> quarter, yeah. But we would have a, a couple of computers here that we would be able to, to work on. Uh, photographs of friends and family. It's where we sleep. What was the biggest challenge for you? Um, you might be only working for 30 minutes one morning on, on some small experiment, but there's hundreds of people, that's their experiment, and they've spent hours and hours and hours, and it's extremely precious to them. So it might just be 30 minutes, but you cannot afford to make a mistake. So the biggest challenge is really just being on, your, on top of your game for so long, for six months. What was your first meal? You know, the first meal was actually on the aircraft that was bringing me back from Kazakhstan. And I was delighted because they had prepared some British tea bags for me. So I had a cup of tea with a little bit of salad, uh, cheese and biscuits. And that's all you actually want because you're still not feeling great. So it was really just kind of simple foods. Um, but to have that first cup of tea on the aircraft was really great. And then afterwards it was, I went for pizza, not salad. Breakfast this morning, scrambled eggs. Yeah, this is the cupola. This is in uh, node three, and um, it's really our, our window on Earth. It's just a wonderful place to go to take photographs, or just if you just want five minutes to yourself, you know, have a coffee and look at the literally look at the world go by. We um, voted, the country has voted to leave the European Union. Now, as a British astronaut, as part of the European Space Agency, tell me how you think that might work. From a point of view of the European Space Agency, the, the UK's participation is not affected by this EU referendum. What we do have to be careful, of course, is, is science, which uh, will be affected by the EU referendum. And I know that there are many people involved in science in the UK who are concerned about how uh, that's going to be affected. So there are certainly many areas that we need to be focusing on as we move forward and trying to, to make the, the best for Britain out of this decision. You've inspired, I'm sure you won't be surprised, I'm sure you'd be very pleased to hear, you've inspired lots of children um, who've been following your mission. So we went back to your primary school, um, <laughs> Westbourne Primary School. And we've filmed with some of the children there and they've sent you a message. Would you like to see this oh, I'd video? I'd love to see it. Right, yes, okay, please. So yeah. Just press play there. Okay. Yeah. Hello, Major Tim. We would like to show you how we've been learning about space. It's brilliant. The, the school hasn't changed that much. <laughs> I've been inspired by him telling well, telling everyone that he wasn't the best at school. That's very true. But that just shows that we can do anything if we just try hard. Is it true you can see the Great Wall of China from space? 
Can you have a bar for a shower in the ISS? Wow, I can see I'm going to have to get back to Westbourne Primary School to answer those questions. So the gym, this is where you have spent, what, all of the last few weeks since you've been back? Are you back up to full strength now, as you were before you left? I feel like I am, and in fact, um, for example, the muscles in my back are actually better, in better condition now than they were pre-launch, but in certain areas it's going to take a lot longer, and, and for my bone density to fully recover, that'll probably take one to two years. You ran the marathon mm. up in space, how was it? It was actually not, not as bad as I was anticipating. So you've had lots of accolades and congratulations for running the marathon, but you never got a medal. So well, the Virgin Money London Marathon thinks you did <laughs> run the marathon. And may I put oh, this on you? I'm going to yeah, pop this down great. because you do at last have oh, a medal wonderful. for running the London Marathon. It's all you yours. Much. Congratulations. That is brilliant. Thank you very much. Are you going to take it off today? No, I'm not. I'm going to keep it on there. <laughs> <laughs> brilliant. Well done. It's been an absolute pleasure talking to you. Thank you so much. Likewise. Thank you. Thank you, that's wonderful. Thanks very much. Charming man. Charming man. We had lots of time with him, and I know the last time we spoke to him, you said to me, Maggie, you didn't ask him about aliens. Do you remember? Mm -hmm. So I was thinking of you, Charlie, all the time while I was interviewing Tim Peake. So I asked him about aliens and whether he actually ever saw one, perhaps peeked out looking for one when he was on the International Space Station. Were there any, any moments you thought that could be something different, that could be something otherworldly uh, you, you do see some strange things but normally they like everything it has an explore, explanation to it um, I you know saw a couple of uh, meteors coming into earth which was really cool to, to watch them um, you don't normally see lights out in space um, during the daytime you see the stars at night but during the daytime you don't normally see any other lights and one time I was at the Cooper and I could see a couple of lights passing by the space station that looked like uh, either satellites or, or fast-moving objects, which was really quite strange, never seen that before. So I called one of my other crewmates over and we had a look at it, we were wondering what it was. Then we realised it wasn't actually far away from the space station, it was quite close to the space station, and it was in fact um, small droplets of liquid that were le leaking out of the progress module. Um, and they were passing, the sunlight was reflecting on these droplets of water. So, like I said, everything that's unusual normally has a, an explanation to it. But if I'm reading that correctly, and forgive me, for a moment in time, it was an unidentified flying object. It was. Until it was, it was identified, and then we know. And the scientist in him came out, yeah, but it was. Of course. He, yeah, he had the same suspicions. There's always an explanation. Good. Now, you can see more of Tim Peake on our Facebook page, and he's answering the questions. You saw some of those from children at Westbourne Primary School as well. There's an extended version of the interview running tonight. We had lots of time with him. We're very lucky. That's on the BBC News channel. Tim Peake, Spaceman, that's on at 8.30 p.m. Matt's weather doesn't stretch quite that far. Keep us closer to Earth, Matt. What do you got? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Not quite as inspirational as Tim Peake either today. After yesterday's sunshine, very good morning, by the way. We've got more.